Hello, my name is Donnie McNichol of Team Animation and I'd like to talk to you about project characteristics. In particular, how you can differentiate between different types of projects and then use those distinctions you've got to help you shape things like um, governance, the appointment of project leaders that, are f that fit with the type of project, uh, etc. If you are applying and thinking about, let's take as an example, the, a framework that you'd like to put into an organisation. We can see here some images of a house and a major construction project. Whatever the framework is that you want to put in place, you need to be aware that you may have to be working with projects of very different scale and size. And you need to think about, we need some an approach, a pro, either it's a, a project delivery approach or a project type of leader. It's got to fit the context, it's got to fit. But you need to differentiate between the si different types of projects, not just in terms of the value, but also a whole series of other characteristics as well. And that's what I'd like to introduce you to. So what we, we've we used quite extensively um, is the Shenhar and De Vere diamond model. Now this is material that's been made freely available as long as you credit uh, Shenhar and De Vere, which is uh, very generous of them. And it comes from a book called Reinventing Project Management uh, originally. And a number of people have then used this and developed this model on. So it looks at four different axes or characteristics of a project uh, to differentiate between them. Um, you Between technology, novelty, pace and complexity. Now you may, for the astute who are looking at this, have looked over in the box on the side and realised that there's one of them that's different and that's got commercial. So what we tend to do, the model I'm about to describe, we often modify it to suit the, the organisation that we're working with need. So for one of the organisations we work with, they were not, they didn't see novelty as being a major issue and we wanted to keep to the four axes so we changed it to commercial because that for them was critical that they were able to differentiate between the different types of commercial relationships and the projects that they had. So let's take an example. If you looked at technology, you can go from low tech right the way up to super high tech. And behind this model, there are distinct, clear distinctions and descriptions about what those mean. And you can translate that into a particular organization's context as well, if it's a small engineering company or a high-end construction company or a marketing company. So we often take the generic structure and then apply that into it. So I'll take as an example where the diamond comes from. So project one, you may go around and map and say, well, I think it's a breakthrough in terms of novelty. It's a super high tech um, and so on. And you can identify the other characteristics. And what you end up with is a diamond. So that is a way of representing the project simply on, the, uh, on this basis. And there is a second type of project. So it goes now one further down in pace, one lower down in technology. So it's a fantastically simple tool. We've used it, this basic structure, with some descriptions of each of the three or four uh, distinctions of technology, novelty and so on, uh, with, uh, in a number of occasions. And what we've found is that it's, it's great if you have multiple people completing this, often they will have a different perception of the project. They may find it very hard to describe that when they're talking, but if they get them to complete this and they've got a one or two of a difference in each axis, they view the project, they perceive the project differently. And of course, that's a fantastic basis to then have a conversation with somebody. So that's a great way of using this. But if you, if you do this, you get uh, agreement about what the profile is for the project. Here's some of the ways we use it. So if you're implementing a project delivery framework, it's a, a project which is right in at the center, a kind of one, 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 right in there, right in the middle of it. Um, would be a very different type of project from one that is right around the diamond, is, right, is large and goes right the way around the external contour very different type of project and you should have a very different type of delivery approach for that. You may also use it for the governance approach on a project. So depending on the, the, the shape of the project depends what level of governance that you apply and I'll just give you an, an example of that in a moment. 
and also the consider the type of project leader. Again, if you've got a diamond which is very small in the centre or one that's very much on the outside, it's unlikely that a person who's used to doing an equivalent of a diamond which is close to the centre would be very comfortable jumping in terms of the level of technology, novelty, pace and complexity to a project right out on the outside. So we use it in multiple ways uh, like that. If you take just one example here of the changes from what you have in the, 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 uh, the centre out, so taking just pace, you can go from say a regular type right the way to a blitz. You take an example blitz, um, the blitz project is immediate, there's team interventions, usually very short time scale, very challenging, very demanding, needs a very certain type of pe uh, person. Typically you're thinking about a task force that's working at project team needs to think like a task force. Um, there's often little bureaucracy if there are, you need to find ways of getting rid of anything that causes friction in the delivery of the project. People need to be available often at all times um, on those blitz projects and you may have not, you may have been involved in a project like that. It's a very different type of characteristic, an animal if you will, from a regular out to a blitz and that's just one of the quadrants. Hopefully you can see if you go around all four and you identify it for your organisation, you get quite a powerful way of working and identifying a unique shape or signature for each project. And here is an example of how we've used the categorising projects and then thinking about the impact on the uh, project governance. So this was from a, a project we did and it identified against that cr the, the model uh, A, B and C types of projects. And we, have, we applied some basic quantitative measures to each of those and we were then able to say, well this shape of project is a, an A, a B or a C type and then you can start to see some of the characteristics. A, if you will, is the most challenging of the project types and that would require the highest level of governance right the way through to C, which is the lowest level of governance. And typically, often it's the A is of usually higher value, C of lower value and so on. But value was an additional consideration that we had. We identified this initially so that people were not jumping to conclusions just in an organisation that delivers, say, a maximum of five million pound size projects, just because something is 100,000, it doesn't mean to say that it might not have an A level of governance that should be applied. And vice versa, you could have a project of two or three million that could actually just require a B level of governance, not an A, because of the fact it's got very low level of complexity, low level of novelty, et cetera. So hopefully that kind of explains to you the way that you can use a model like this and apply it in an organisation to try and give you some insight that you don't have. And as I may have mentioned, it is included in describing part one of uh, the book. Some details there if it's of interest to you. So I hope you found that of interest and thank you very much for watching the video.